chapter 6, we have Jesus feeding the 5,000. We also have him walking on the water and testing the faith of Peter. Then we have the healing of the man blind from birth in John chapter 9. And finally, the resurrection of Lazarus in chapter 11. Why those signs are important? Because they are reminders to us of the effect of Christ in our lives. So the first part of this reflection is God's prior approach to us. In other words, let's make it practical. You walk into church, you uh, genuflect, you go to your seat, and you await the beginning of the liturgy. And when the liturgy begins, after the preparation of confessing our sins, etc., the readings are done. Now keep in mind that the early church borrowed from the Jewish synagogue service the Old Testament readings and the Psalms. So added to that, as the church evolved, was the gospel, and it was done in terms of telling the stories about Jesus. And that is very important for us, because we, the best way to invite people into the life of Christ is not to hit them over the head with a book of theology, but to invite them to listen to the stories of Jesus, what he said and especially what he did. So the first part of this, as you're sitting in your pew, you're listening to the word of God. And that word reminds us that the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. It's the incarnate word of God himself. That is very profound. Now, we say it's God's prior approach. So what happens? We must now respond to God's approach to us. And that is best explained by reflecting on the offertory, where we are invited to follow Jesus, to reflect on the word that we have just heard, And we bring to him the bread and the wine that is to become the body and blood of Christ. It's a meditation. Uh, Jesus went off, remember, to a quiet place to pray. He went up on the mountain where he was transfigured. And he went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And we are invited to walk with him through that process and through the liturgy of the word that we hear and present ourselves as a response to God's approach to us. Very strong and very real. Thirdly, we now have God's intimate approach and acceptance of our response. So you have to picture the fact that we hear God's word, we respond to it, by saying yes in so many different words through the offertory, especially as we bring our gifts, whether real or spiritual, to the altar. And now we enter into the great mystery that is the Eucharist itself, where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus. This prayer is union with God. And when we say, Our Father, The prayer is a relationship with God himself. This consecration, as we call it, the third part, God's intimate approach to us through the consecration, invites us to say the words of Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. And as a result of saying that we accept our commitment to be a follower of Jesus and we ponder the word of God in our lives. I want to dwell on this a little bit because this is one of the most important of me. We are entering into the great mystery and sacrifice which is the Eucharist. And Every time we open ourselves 
to hear the word of God and to hear the reflection that the priest or bishop might do, we are learning something about Christ. Not something